So John, I couldn't hear your introduction, but I trust that it was kind. Um, and I've been doing, this conference has gone on for seven years, and I've done this for seven years, and I just heard something backstage that I've never heard before. Uh, and a couple people in the crew said, we're actually calm this time. So John, congratulations and Tim on having the first calm crew in your history. Um, so as John pointed out, what I'm going to do is frame 10 questions that are things that internet executives should be thinking about and really just um, ask the question and then show some data and illustrate why they're important topics. The focus areas are globality, mobile, social ecosystems, advertising, commerce, media, company leadership evolution, Steve Jobs, ferocious pace of change in tech, and then some closing thoughts. What? What? Should I stop now? Um, so the first one is globality. And the question is, do you know which players in which countries do what you do better or at least differently than you do, and do you study and implement it? And Robin Lee referenced this a little bit yesterday. I'm sure that um, Yuri Milner will do the same today. But if you look around the world, 46% of Internet users are in just five countries. The largest country in the world with, for Internet users is China, followed by the U.S., followed by Brazil, followed by India, followed by Russia. The penetration in India is only 5%. In China, it's only about 30%. In Brazil, it's only, only 39%. And the question is, these are very vibrant and active markets. There's a lot of innovation happening in those markets. And the question is, do you look at the companies that do what you do in each of those countries and look at their best practices and try to apply them to your business? Uh, because I guarantee, if you're, not in America, if you're not an American business, the companies in those countries are doing that with your business and you should be um, doing the same. Similar point on mobile, if we look at the top 3G markets around the world, there are about 670 million 3G subscribers, very rapid growth, up 37 percent year on year. And the five markets to watch are the U.S. and Japan, because they have the highest number of mobile users, and then Indonesia, China, and Brazil, because they have a lot of users but they're growing the fastest. So in effect, they have the most girth. So again, markets to pay attention to, to look at best practices and what's going on in, in those markets. Um, and two great examples of companies that are looking at what's going on in other markets to, in effect, figure out some of their, um, their growth plans are Facebook and Tencent. Uh, Facebook is the largest social network in English-speaking countries, as you know, about 620 million uh, visitors in, in September. Tencent, largest social network in effect in China, also about 600 million uh, users measured by their active IM users. Tencent is more of a virtual identity community. Facebook is more of a real person um, identity community, and they're clearly looking at one another to help figure out their growth trajectories. The virtual goods market, $1.4 billion market in 2009 for Tencent. Facebook clearly moving more and more in, in that direction. Uh, mobile, it's ramping faster than any new, new thing. Is your business um, leading or lagging? Um, as all of you know that have been in the technology industry, for, if you've been in the technology industry for a long time, you know that when new markets have emerge, uh, big winners and big losers are created. And this is no different. Uh, and as the facts indicate, many of you have probably seen this slide before, this is really ramping than faster than anything we've seen before. Uh, in technology. The green line indicates the growth of the iPhone, the iTouch, and the iPad. Compares that to what were epic uh, product evolutions uh, in previous times. AOL, the red line, NTT, Docomo, IMO, the yellow line, and Netscape uh, represented by the blue line. New attackers in the market are driving tremendous market excitement and momentum. Uh, one of the things we always look for is share shifts in markets. If we look at what Android and the Apple iOS have accomplished, you all know it. You're using a lot of the products. But when you look at the hard facts of how what their market share gains look like, it's pretty telling. Based on Gartner data from the um, third quarter, Android now accounts for 25 percent of smartphone global unit shipments, and Android is much more than phones. Um, the iPhone accounts for 17 percent. Symbian, Nokia, 37% down from 62% in the first quarter of 2006. RIM holding its own, and then the other operating systems losing um, tremendous share. So not only is it about share gains, it's about getting consumers excited about going to the stores, going online, and buying new products. Uh, smartphones will outship PC shipments within two years. It's a, it's a big deal as it relates to how people are going to change how they access the Internet. We've used Japan as a proxy. Um, for looking at how quickly 
the mobile internet, mobile internet usage can, um, can overtake desktop internet usage. This looks at the leading social networking site in Japan called Mixi. 84% of their page views come from their mobile, come from mobile, uh, connecti mobile devices versus 17% four years ago. Uh, next question, social ecosystems. Would you rather be Google, Apple, or Facebook? Uh, will their future directions help or hurt your businesses? Um, they are all innovating at a very rapid pace. Um, they're all in very strong positions. If you go back and look at the history of technology, typically uh, incumbents are uh, obsoleted by attackers. Um, this time around, the incumbents are not asleep at the switch uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, advertising, we think it's ripe for innovation. We've been waiting for online advertising to um, show its stuff for about 15 years. And the question is, will your business benefit from it? You all have seen this slide. Uh, media time spent versus online advertising is still, uh, ver advertising spending is still out of whack. Um, and we think the social networking inventory and the personalization and the localization and the excitement around mobile is going to be one of the things that causes that shift of offline dollars to online dollars to potentially accelerate um, and finally get more traction than it has heretofore. Advertising dollars always follow eyeballs. Um, a couple of slides that we think are important. Facebook, as you know, has a 600 million plus users. There, we believe the inventory on Facebook is one of the most under-monetized advertising, classes of advertising on the web. Um, we think that will become um, uh, less under monetized over, as the next five years evolve. Twitter is in a similar situation. Um, there's a huge opportunity for ad CPM dislocations uh, on Wall Street. We call it an arbitrage opportunity. Uh, but if we look at social networking, according to Comscore, accounts for 27% of ad display units on the internet. The CPM is only 55 cents, materially lower than it is for other categories um, of, of, of other other websites or other types of websites and the CPMs that they support in their business. That's unusual and, 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 and they'll, they'll, those, both of those numbers will probably come in line with the passage of time. There haven't been a lot of great online ads um, over the course of the last 10 to 15 years in my humble opinion. Uh, this just looks at the great ads of the last century according to advertising age. Um, and, and when I was growing up, ads on TV or on radio or on billboards caused me to act because they were um, pretty inspiring. I think that, that on, the, on, the, on the web today, we're going to see a lot more innovation. We're starting to see it from the likes of Apple, um, Yahoo, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and others. I don't know about you, but I've clicked on more online ads in the last six months than I've clicked on in the last 15 years, and they're much more relevant in part because the creative is better and I can actually consummate the ad with a, with a transaction. Um, commerce phrases like um, Walmart in your pocket, um, according to Neil Young at NG Moco, location-based services, group buying power, flash sales, deep discounts, transparent pricing, uh, real-time alerts, virtual goods. These words were not really in our lexicon three to five years ago. Um, the products are fast, they're easy, they're fun. The rate of constant improvement um, is unlike anything I've ever seen with new products before. And the question is, is your business keeping pace um, all you need to do is look at your iPad in the morning and see how many um, apps are ready for updates. Um, this is not normal, uh, but it is the new normal, um, and, and it's important to, um, to keep up the pace to stay in the game. Another point, and I think Bing Gordon will talk about it in, in the panel or later today, is the humans want everything to be like a game. Mark Zinga referred to that yesterday. I think another thing that was talked about that we certainly believe, it's taken e-commerce 15 years to get to 5% of retail, we think mobile will get to 5% of retail, in a, in, not in 15 years, but potentially in five years or 10 years on a much faster trajectory. Again, a big deal if you're not, if you're not set up for that with your business. Uh, I'm gonna skip past this and move on to media. What does the extraordinary ramp in on-demand video usage mean for your business? Um, if we look at the data that just came out from uh, Sandive, Streaming video is up to 37% of internet traffic during traditional TV hours, with Netflix being the number one um, driver of that, followed by YouTube, uh, followed by Flash, Shantanu. Um, on mobile, 
41% of peak hour traffic is streaming, um, is, is mobile video, up from 27% in January. The, we, these types of growth rates are not normal, uh, and it speaks to how empowered the user feels and how much they like these types of products. Uh, Eric Schmidt referred to this yesterday. We were stunned when we saw the data. Um, YouTube content growth is accelerating, um, up to 35, uh, 35 hours of content added every every minute. Um, next point, internet company leadership evolution. We've had shocking changes over the last six years. The question is, are you prepared for the next half decade of change? This looks, um, one of the measures of success, though not the only one, is, is a public, um, for publicly traded companies, is their market value. Um, the data on the, on the right looks at the top 15 global internet companies ranked by market value in 2004. The data on the left looks at uh, the top 15 companies ranked by market value in 2010. So uh, over a six-year period, seven of the companies that were on the list of 2004 didn't make it to the list in 2010, and seven companies that weren't on the list in 2004 made it on the list in 2010, uh, to state the obvious. But it just speaks to the, the, uh, the volume and intensity of change, and we're probably in for another six years just like that. Uh, next question is Steve Jobs, what's his secret sauce? Does your company have it? Uh, Walt Mossberg and, and Kara Swisher have um, called out some great observations about Steve Jobs at their de-conference over the course of the last decade. My favorite was when uh, Larry Ellison described Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs in 2004 as having the mind of an engineer and the heart of an artist. Um, it's unusual when one person has the mind of an engineer and the heart of an artist, but in the management team of every successful company, um, you need to have at least one engineer and one, one artist, if you will, um, that are making the decisions and working in a very uh, collaborative way to drive, um, to drive great products that consumers, consumers love. Next point, uh, ferocious pace of change, what's next in tech? And the question for you as, as entrepreneurs and for businesses is when do consumers or enterprises or incumbents and attackers need you meaning every day you need to wake up and say, I need to have a product that customers, consumers, or enterprises can't live without, or I need to create a business that incumbents or attackers uh, can't live without, and they'll, they'll, need to, they'll need to buy my business. And those things are all, um, are all symbiotic. Uh, to state the mom and apple pie stuff, mobile connectivity drives new ways to do lots of things faster, cheaper, better from the palm of your hand. It's really simple stuff, but when you take a step back and think about uh, the degree of change, and Scott Thompson talked about this yesterday, in the way um, in the way th so many things are changing, it is um, it's a unique time to state the obvious. We have an unusually high level of innovation from the incumbents. I've never seen this in my career following technology companies over the course of the last couple decades. Whether it's Apple, Google, Amazon, Tencent, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft with Connect, uh, PayPal, Netflix, Salesforce.com and then also an unusually high level of innovation from new attackers, whether it's Facebook or Zynga, Twitter, um, et cetera. Um, Clay Christensen coined a phrase called disruptive innovation. It's worth pausing and taking a step back to think about it. There are two ways disruptive innovation can happen. One is called the low-end segment strategy. It's when disruptors introduce a product that is in the low end of a market and is neither profitable for the incumbents nor in demand from the incumbents customers. Examples of companies that have done this kind of thing very successfully are Amazon.com, Netflix, and PayPal. The other way disruptive innovation can happen is called, uh, Clay Christensen calls it the non-consumption strategy. Disruptors introduce a product that was unavailable to consumers before, effectively competing, non -cons competing with non-consumption. And great exa examples of that are the iPhone, uh, the iPad, and, um, and Facebook. And I think we're in a unique period of time with lots of disruptive innovation. Um, closing thoughts, and I'm going to uh, make a positive point, a negative point, and then close with a positive point, and then go through the disclosure statements, as I'm required to do. Um, but large companies do not typically support the rapid growth rates and the magnitude that follow. And the question is, will, we, will these trends continue? We think they will. Um, and these slides are a bit of an eyesore, but the data points that I'll call out are uh, su certainly surprised me and I think worth reflecting on. This looks at the third quarter results for the majority of the top 15 most highly capitalized internet companies in the world. Number one is Apple. In the thir third quarter, their momentum continued as revenue grew 67% year-on-year. 
Um, I haven't gone back in the history to determine how many companies with $20 billion in revenue and $283 billion in market cap grew their revenue by 67 percent year on year. I can't say that's never happened before, but I can certainly say it's highly unusual and abnormal uh, and speaks to the underlying uh, momentum that Apple has. Google also had great momentum in the third quarter. Momentum accelerated. One of the things that we love on Wall Street is either high growth rates, and we especially like uh, acceleration, and, the, and, and momentum accelerated. Search quality improved. Mobile usage growth, extended reach, uh, and paid clicks were up 16% year on year, and cost per click was up 3% Q on Q, um, driving pretty strong revenue growth. Amazon.com revenue growth, again, 39% year on year, highly unusual for a company of that size to support that sort of revenue growth. Tencent um, momentum continued and revenue grew 55% year on year. PayPal payment volume grew 26% year on year. Baidu. Uh, Robbins Company supported accelerating revenue growth uh, to 76% year-on-year. Yahoo Display Advertising Revenue grew 17% year-on-year. Priceline Gross Bookings Growth remained strong at 47% year-on-year, and revenue growth continued to accelerate. Alibaba, strong revenue growth at 40% year-on-year. Akamai Revenue Growth accelerated for the fourth straight quarter to 23% year-on-year. And Netflix supported very strong momentum as subscriber and revenue growth continued to accelerate up 52 percent and 31 percent, uh, respectively. So again, these are big companies, they're successful companies, um, and they're supporting extremely high levels of growth, in large part, I think, because of the innovation that's happening in the market and the acceptance of mobile, mobile devices. Uh, that was the good news. Now the bad news, something you should be thinking about that may not be top of mind. And forgive my segue into the United States, where we all many of us work and live, uh, but this is something you need to be aware of um, because sometimes things come over the transom that you aren't expecting, them, aren't expecting like the mortgage um, impact a few years ago and, and, and certainly the recession the U.S. went through. But according to the U.S. government, entitlement spending and interest expense are for, forecast to exceed, to exceed the United States revenue by 2025, um, far sooner than was forecast as recently as 10 years ago. That's government government data. And the only reason I throw this out here is it may not seem like it's relevant to your businesses, but it is, and you need to pay, you need to pay attention to it. Uh, it's important to focus on the data, and it's important to be uh, politically engaged in one way, shape, or form. Uh, and I'm going to close with the near-term good news. And I, was, I had to laugh and smile when I saw this data that came out from the Fed, National uh, Retail Federation. Um, this was a great slide, and I, I, it just made me very, very happy. But they did a survey of um, 8,767 8, respondents responded that they do plan, 92 percent, plan to celebrate a major winter holiday um, this year. And with that, that slide didn't look like this a year ago or a year earlier, so something to be happy with. And that's my closing point. I'm done on time. And these are the disclosure statements. And I hope that was interesting. <laughs> and thank you very much.